Hi guys, it's Reagan and welcome back to another video. Today's video is one I'm so excited to film because honestly, it's fun and I get to talk about so many different fantasy books, which is in general just my favorite topic of conversation. That's right, today we're gonna be doing some hyper-specific fantasy recommendations based off of prompts that you guys submitted via my Instagram story. I have countless book recommendation requests that I have collected from Instagram and I'm gonna be trying to fulfill as many of them as I can today. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and dive right in. One of my most requested prompts was an enemies to lovers book recommendation, but also a fantasy series that has some good romantic angst and tension, but still also has some fantastic like political elements to it. And I kind of have a two for one special for a recommendation for these two prompts. It's actually going to be a very recent read and I'm gonna go with Swordcatcher by Cassandra Clare. Here's the deal. I think Cassandra Clare writes some very fantastic romantic angst and that is definitely present within this series, but this is her adult fantasy debut. And it also has a really interesting fantasy setting as well as very complex like politics that are at play. The plot is like a slow build, but it's intense and absolutely captivated me. There is, I think, enemies to lovers within this, but the romance of it is so slow burn. Like I can't tell it keeps waffling back and forth. I personally hate an enemies to lovers or slow burn build romance where they actually like each other within the first like 15, 20% of the book. This has a lot of tension, a lot of uh, dislike between various characters. And I feel like it could go in a romantic direction or they could still hate each other. And that is what I think is so entertaining about the romantic plot lines of this book. I feel like the pacing is so slow and it could still go in so many different directions. I am hooked both from the fantasy plotline of this and the romance like slow burn element of this too. And again, the enemies to lovers are definitely enemies to say the least, uh, at least so far. <laughs> Next up is a book inspired by the Roman Empire and also a lot of prompts like what book is your Roman Empire? So I will answer both, starting with the book inspired by the Roman Empire, but there's actually a lot of fantasy series that have Roman inspired influence. But the one that immediately comes to mind is The Will of the Many by James Islington. This also has a fantastic like military magic school setting as well. Our main character lives in a world very much inspired by the Roman Empire and also has a very strong like hierarchy inspired by the Roman Empire. In the beginning of this book, he's basically uh, trained to become a spy and he infiltrates this very prestigious military school and he's kind of pulled in lots of different directions. The main character is super likable. It's very intense politically and the school setting is a lot of fun, but the Roman influence is there and it's there in a lot of different places. I mean, like even the cover kind of gives Roman inspired vibes. This book honestly hooked me from page one. Definitely one of my favorite newer fantasy releases of this year. I could not put it down. For the book or book series that's my Roman empire, it shouldn't be too much of a surprise for me to say The Realm of the Elderlings by Robin Hobb. Uh, this series has just taken over my life in every way, shape, and form. All of the series I'm obsessed with, the emotional journey I have gone on, it has been traumatic, honestly. I would also say I got some requests for like, what is a fantasy series that's huge, that's epic, that has multiple generations, lots of different characters and plot lines. The Realm of the Elderlings is definitely gonna satisfy that too. And I think that's why it's my Roman Empire. So many different characters to fall in love with and also just be torn apart about. So many different directions this plot has gone on. And because so much time exists within this series, the author just really paces everything out in a way that will utterly destroy you. All of her series within this are fantastic. The Fits and the Fool, oriented one, but also the series that have lots of POVs to read from that really expand and grow the world that all of these uh, stories sort of take place in. I love dearly too. Robin Hobb is just like on another level in my opinion. I feel like she really just perfectly drags everything out so it's agonizing and so satisfying. I feel like often we want to read uh, books, myself included, that are like breakneck in their pacing for action. And I feel like Robin Hobb shows that books don't necessarily need to be having things happening left and right to be satisfying from a plot point of view. And in fact, in the way that she makes us wait for things, it's almost better because she kind of finally puts you out of your misery if you like it or not. Next up is a quest centered story that follows an older main character, preferably a parent. I have to go with The Shadow of the Gods by John Gwen. This is a Viking Norse mythology inspired fantasy series by this author. I've had a bit of a John Gwen year if I'm not gonna lie, but I actually started with this series and I really like it. This is multi POV and set in a very sparse and desolate landscape where gods once roamed the land and now they're kind of reawakening once again. We follow a variety of characters 
pathways, but one of our primary character point of views is our main character, Orca, and she is a mother going on a quest trying to save her son. And she is not only one of my like favorite characters in the series, she's one of my favorite characters in fantasy in general. Her perspective, her motivations, just so richly explored. And I just love a murderous mommy, if you will. And this is just a fantastic book and series and Orca as one of our main characters going on that quest is one of my favorite plot lines too. Next up is A Book Wreck If I Love Vicious by V.E. Schwab. For me, when I think about the inputs of why I like Vicious, it's kind of like morally gray characters that are also hyper intelligent with a contemporary setting and a very dark and propulsive plot. So I feel like if you like Vicious, I really feel like you should also check out Middle Game by Seanan McGuire. I feel like some of the character elements, particularly the more really gray elements and the hyper intelligence is very much a part of this book as well. The plots are different from one another, but they do both include like magic and the pursuit of power is definitely very center stage within both narrative. But in this book, we're introduced to two twins, Roger and Dodger. One is skilled in language and the other is very skilled in mathematics. They are separated by lots of distance, but they've always found each other like over the years and they have a deep, deep, deep connection. Um, fast forward, there's like this dark alchemy group that's sort of obsessed with them and like a lot of things begin to spiral out of control. This is dark and mysterious and strange. And again, academic settings are like very prevalent in this and we also jump forward and back in time. So yeah, I feel pretty confident if you liked Vicious, you would love Middle Game. Next is a fantasy book with a historical setting but is not set in the West. I have a couple for these. I love historical fantasy so much and there's so many fantastic ones to pick from. First, I have The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah. This is a multi-POV quest-centered story inspired by the tale of 1001 Nights and it's absolutely captivating and the setting is also fantastic. We follow again, a larger cast of characters. One of our main characters is known as the Midnight Merchant and she's known for being able to procure like magical objects and she has a gin bodyguard. She's basically sort of tricked to have to go on this life or death mission by the evil king and she's accompanied by a variety of characters. You traverse these landscapes. The historical influence and also the story influences of this book just absolutely shine. I can't wait to read book two. I was really intrigued and entertained by book one. This book is great. And the other book I have to recommend is She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan, one of my favorite books of all time. This book is set in 14th century China and is a historical fantasy reimagining of the events that occurred during this time period. In this, we follow a cast of characters that are all morally gray and incredibly dynamic. One of them is our main character, Zhu, who basically takes on the identity of her brother and his destiny, if you will. We follow her as she gets educated and also gets involved in rebellion. This book is so incredible. The writing style, the setting, just the exploration of queer identity is just impeccable. I love this book so much. And I feel like the historical influence is so key to the narrative too, which I also love. Sometimes you read fantasy books that are just sort of set in a time period and other books really perfectly walk that line of like history and fantasy. And this is one of those stories. Next up is a fantasy recommendation for all the thriller girlies out there. And don't worry, I got you. One of my favorite subgenres of fantasy is like fantasy mixed with a thriller. I don't read a lot of thrillers on a regular basis, but I love a thriller sub plot within a fantasy series. One of my more recent favorites has to be Empire of Exiles by Aaron M. Evans. This book is a multi-POV, highly political fantasy novel, but has like a dark and dangerous like thriller mystery at the heart of it too. It also has a very dangerous setting that sort of involves zombies and a really interesting magic system at play as well. Basically four unlikely characters kind of get brought together after a series of murders begin to rock the city. They kind of have to also work together to try to figure out what is going on as all of them kind of get drawn in for different reasons. I love all the characters. I love the plot lines. This hooked me. I flew through it. I can't wait for book two. This book I also feel like is criminally underrated. So if you like a thriller mystery subplot to your fantasy stories, you got to check this one out. Next is a book with a found family and heist component that isn't Six of Crows. I gotta go with Foundry Side by Robert Jackson Bennett. This book has both those things you're looking for and it's also the first book to one of my favorite fantasy trilogies. This series centers heists in every single book and also the love and growth of a very unlikely found family situation. Also has ancient magic, so much humor. It's also incredibly clever and the setting is super cool. It's kind of inspired by like city states and merchant politics from our own history. It truly has so much going for it and the magic system is just wholly unique. It kind of reminds me of magical coding. You can break into like 
physical raw materials and rewrite how they function and work within the world. And it's so clever and how the author builds not only the plot, the intensity of these heists, but also the magic system is just truly on another level. I love Robert Jackson Bennett. He's one of my favorite fantasy authors out there. And this series has so many great inputs that if you love found family and heists, one of the greatest combinations, you gotta read this. It also has a lot of great queer romances within this as well. Next is a classic feeling sort of medieval fantasy with a dash of romance. I feel like it shouldn't be too much of a surprise if I'm not gonna talk about the Legends of the First Empire series by Michael J. Sullivan. This series took over my life late last year and early this year. I flew through all of the books in this and I truly love it. Like this is classic fantasy to a T. It uses so many of very well-known and beloved tropes, but I also feel like Michael J. Sullivan puts a spin on the narrative style too. It's set in like an ancient fantasy landscape and we follow a group of humans and for the longest time they've basically worshipped the elves that lived here as gods until one day a human accidentally kills a god, kind of upending um, the religion and philosophy of this land and also creates a situation of war. And throughout the entire series you see sort of the growth and civilization of humankind and the growth of this conflict. There's also so many different characters, so many people to fall in love with. There is elements and subplots of romance, but this is like an epic, a tale, a myth that's being created. I laughed, I cried, it was so good, and it felt so homey while reading it, even though it is really intense and emotional. There was something really endearing about it to me, and I think it's just its classic nature. Next, I had a request for like magical forest, witchy sort of vibes, and honestly, I feel like if you want something that's like very nature forward in its writing and characters that are like kind of like healers in the woods. Anything by Juliet Morelier is going to land in that category. And I'm gonna recommend Dreamer's Pool by Juliet Morelier for this specifically. It has like a lot of those classic fantasy setups, especially with like this woman living in an isolated cottage in the woods and she's healing people and healing a community um, and kind of getting involved in politics, but she's also kind of mistrusted depending on where she is given her power and knowledge. All of those things are part of this book. It definitely has like, you know, like witchy herbalist vibes, if you know what I mean. And Juliet Morelier's like nature writing is just on another level. Recommend a book that will get me out of my Divine Rivals hangover, a book kind of like Divine Rivals vibe. I would say for this, I'd recommend A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. This book also has like academic rivals to lovers. I would say Divine Rivals is technically like co-worker rivals to lovers, but similar, like both of these people are very passionate about their like pursuits in Divine Rivals, their writers and this, their academics. They quickly realize that they actually have a connection and they begin to work with each other. This book has a more face centered storyline and I will say our main character Effie has a really traumatic um, sort of character arc that we also follow within this. It has a mystery with magic and darkness that sort of pulls you in, um, but also has a very endearing, almost faded feeling romance as well with a bit of that kind of fun snarky back and forth, which is also definitely present within Divine Rivals as well. And it kind of has that like murky historical fantasy setting, which honestly I'm personally really into right now. It's like kind of our world, but kind of not. Then we have a book that has like the whimsy of middle grade, but isn't middle grade, but is actually adult fantasy. Obviously I have to take this opportunity to talk about Send Lit Ascends by Josiah Bancroft, one of the most unique and strange and whimsical adult fantasy series I've ever read. I I'm obsessed with this series. It's truly like nothing I've read before. I feel like it captured everything I loved about stories and books growing up and then kind of brought it to a new and much more intense and dark place that I got to experience within this story. A huge cast of characters you will fall in love with. So weird, but everything worked for me and I just loved the strangeness. I also felt like he was able to balance how strange everything was with how likable the characters were and how dynamic they were. So like the characters felt so real, even though everything that they were surrounded by was just so wholly bizarre. Want more things like this. I love what Josiah Bancroft is doing in terms of like writing style and literary leaning books. I love it so much. Next up, I had some requests for like unique magic systems. Also books that remind me of Avatar The Last Airbender, another two birds, one stone scenario, because I'm gonna talk about The Sword of Kaigen by Emma Wang. This is also a fantasy standalone. So I feel like this could check a lot of boxes depending on who you are, but the magic system in this is one of my favorite parts. Like, don't get me wrong. This is a book told from the perspective of a mother and son, 
The relationship highlighted within this is so good and the uh, drama and the intensity of the plot as war begins to heat up and threaten this community is just unputdownable. But the magic system in this centers around elemental magic and there's lots of different types uh, in this world. And in this one community, it's ice elemental magic. And we get to learn how that works. And the magic system is really interesting. But again, it's not the only type of magic and it's all elemental based. So you see the connection with Avatar The Last Airbender here, but the character and just the character journeys you go on in this, it's untouchable. It's amazing. It's so interesting. Come for the super cool magic system. Stay for a heartbreaking story that will ruin your life. Next is a multi POV, very political fantasy story that will consume my life. To be honest, I feel like I have to talk about one specific series, and that is the Faithful and the Fallen series by John Glenn, because this is that and also the most recent version of that to take over my life. I read all of these books in this series, like basically back to back to back to back. I could not put them down. I felt consumed reading this book. Um, there was also another request for like a subverted chosen one trope. And this also works for that as well. This book has a huge cast of characters, like so many characters. And because of that, you have lots of different tropes at play here, which make it so intriguing. There's chosen one, there's subverted chosen one. There's so many things happening here. There's animal companions, like there's something for everyone in this, but just the amount of politics and the growth of those politics in this sort of traditional medieval setting was addicting to me. Also has Roman Empire influence with the combat. Like, again, something for everyone here. I read this so fast. First book is like slower and is really about building and setting up the series. But once you hit book two, you just won't be able to put it down. Like the intensity of the plot, the combat, the conflict, it just balloons and grows. It consumed me. I couldn't stop reading it. Um, and I didn't stop reading it until I finished it. Next up is a book that feels like leaves crunching beneath your feet. And for this, I have to go with Spells Forgetting by Adrienne Young. I describe this book often as like Gilmore Girls meets a small town thriller story. If you want small town vibes with a beautifully written like fall atmosphere, this is the book for you. It also very much has like magical witchy vibe combined with a dark mystery of the past finally being unveiled. We basically follow our main character who before the start of the story in like 20 years prior, her best friend actually tragically died and the whole town thought her boyfriend did it at the time. And he fled the town with his mother shortly after the events and she has not seen him since until now because he's back on the island. So melodramatic and vibey and the atmosphere of this book is too good. And magic does play a part in this. It almost feels like, you know when you're watching Twilight and it has that like blue filter over everything and it just adds this vibe? Like this book sort of has that blue filter over everything. It's just so like, eerie and misty and dramatic and I ate it up. Then we have a fantasy book that is super, super, super political. I have to go with The Trader Baro Comerant by Seth Dickinson. This is one of my favorite hyper political like fantasy book recommendations. I mean, this series is all about the politics and it's also very, very dark and very morally gray. It's kind of like if Tyrion Lannister had his own book series about him. In this book, we follow our main character, Baro Comerant, and at the beginning of the story, her, her homeland is taken over by this very evil empire, and from that day, she swears vengeance. Fast forward, she's now grown up, she's now working for the empire, and she's gonna try to tear it apart from the inside out. And now she has her first like posting in this other faraway kingdom, and you see her begin to do her work, and it's just like, fascinating to be in this character's mind. I felt like she was constantly tricking me, shocking me, disturbing me, and I, loved it. Don't get me wrong, I love combat, I love a good sword fight moment, but I really love when people are like tearing each other apart via like contracts. It's great. And Baro Comerant is doing that. She could destroy the world. <laughs> Next up, I had quite a few requests for some like urban fantasy recommendations. So I have a few. First, I have The Library of the Dead by T.L. Huchu. If you want something that's like mystery of the week, endearing, like spooky, but also a little bit cozy, like scary, but not too scary vibes. This is the series for you. You follow such a likable main character and it's set in the city of Edinburgh, but like a slightly alternate version of our world. In this version, it's a bit darker, it's a bit grimmer and ghosts exist and also like professions surrounding the paranormal also exist and our main character can interact with ghosts. And she basically in book one stumbles upon a mystery of like missing children and she works to solve it. She's just so capricious and likable that I think she just anchors the story so well. I'm going to be reading book two personally very, very soon, but I love like a mystery of the week vibe. And I feel like this is that. Then I obviously also have to talk about Jade City, 
by Fonda Lee. This wouldn't be a fantasy recommendation video if I couldn't plug one of my all-time favorite series, Urban Fantasy, set in the fictional city of Cape Cod. The material called Jade makes you faster, stronger, better. Crime families control the entire city, and a cold war is heating up between two of them. Pretty much every character you read in this series is a different member of this family and some others. It has multi-generational stuff happening, Ugh, the time that passes, the drama and intensity of what's happening, both not within the family, but also within the family. It's just intoxicating. I love this series so much. If you love like family-centered stories, like family drama, this is it, okay? This is it. I got a lot of requests for like animal companions and even like Pokemon related fantasy books. And immediately the one that comes to mind, The Furies of Calderon by Jim Butcher. He literally says he wrote this book because someone challenged him to write a series that was inspired by Pokemon and like the Roman Empire. Again, the Roman Empire crops up a lot. But in this book, we follow like a classic chosen one trope and everyone in this world has like abilities but they're also connected to like a little companion or figure so there's like little pokemon-esque icons that follow everyone around so if you like things with like creatures but don't want dragons but still want that sort of animal companion vibes the furies of calderon is for you it also has a school setting so we follow our main character as he gets educated and learns how to harness the magic system lots of military combat and like classic end of the world sort of situations this is one of my favorite series growing up i haven't read it in a long time i kind of want to revisit it but again if you like pokemon this series is quite literally inspired by Pokemon. And then the last book I'm gonna recommend is a found family, but they're older, they go on adventures, there's like all different types of stuff happening with them together. Honestly, the book that fits perfectly within this has to be the Adventures of Amina al Sarafi by Shannon Chakraborty. This book is literally about a well-known and notorious pirate getting the band back together to go out on one last adventure because they were offered like a sum of money they could not refuse. This is also all about like reconnecting, um, kind of confronting past pains and past stuff and like healing collectively as a group. There's also so much like adventure, obviously the Adventures of Amina al Sarafi as they're on the water. It has humor and lightheartedness, but also so much heart and introspection. It it's truly a delight, and I also just love Amina al Sarafi, and also her being an older female character rooting a adventure-based fantasy tale. I love to see it, and I love hearing about all of the tales that surround her from her past. It's just, it has so much humor at play here, and it was truly a delight. Alrighty, guys, those are my hyper-specific fantasy recommendations. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you soon with another one soon. Goodbye!